We also wanted to make sure that we highlighted this story in, out in California. And as you said in the beginning of the show, if this was in New York or it, frankly even in Florida or something, more accessible via the East Coast, then this would be completely different. But the polling that is coming out of this race, and I, of course, will give a grain of salt whenever it comes to the polling <laughs> and more, looks like it could be incredibly close for Gavin Newsom. So let's throw this up there on the screen from The Hill, actually, which wrote up this poll from CBS News. So there's a four-point margin of error. Now, in this CBS News poll, the 52% of likely voters said Newsom should not be recalled, but 48% said that he should be ousted. And so just so people know, all that needs to happen in order for Newsom to leave this recall is for 51% of people to say, yes, he should be recalled, and then the person who receives the most amount of votes, not a plurality, would win. Now, under that scenario, you would have maybe a 51% recall, and then only 20% or something supporting a candidate. That person could become the next governor of yeah. the state of California. This is 50-something million people live out there, okay? They have one of the largest GDPs in the world just as mm -hmm. a state. This is a huge story. And Newsom's failures, both on COVID, I mean, the lockdown hypocrisy, French laundry, crime is sky high all throughout California. There is the dissatisfaction with the, uh, the disparity between the tax rate and then you also just see like all these, you know, the state is basically run by the elite and basically completely fails lower middle class people who live there. So there's a, a weird dynamic going yeah. on here. And just to, so people understand um, some of the dynamics at play. Mm. First of all, this recall effort wasn't really picking up that much steam until he went in, you know, and uh, in opposition to his own COVID lockdown, yes. procedures went to French Laundry and that entire, the, for this fancy, I think it was a birthday party or mm -hmm. whatever, unmasked, indoors, all of that, and gets caught. That's when the recall uh, really started to pick up steam and they got enough signatures to actually take it to the voters. So that's important to, uh, to sort of keep in mind. In terms of the mechanics of how this is gonna work, this is important and you laid it out. So voters will be faced with two questions. Question number one, do you want to recall Gavin Newsom, okay? Now, if a majority says yes, then you go to question number two, and people are asked, who do you want to replace him? So the Newsom uh, campaign and the Democratic Party writ large have had this awkward question of like, okay, obviously they're pushing people to vote no on question number one, but do we want to tell people like, but on that second question, here's who you should fill out. Yes. Um, and so far, their strategy has been just leave it blank, leaving it open to basically whoever Republicans or independents mm -hmm. ultimately pick. One of the bizarre dynamics here is that Newsom's approval, Newsom's approval ratings are actually solidly above water. Um, in this same poll, 57% of California adults approve of the job he's doing and 43% of adults disapprove. So if you are looking at the population writ large and you just ask them, do you like Gavin Newsom and how he's doing as governor, actually 57% say yes, which right. is pretty strong. The problem he faces is that those people who support him are not particularly motivated to come out and vote in this recall. So even in this CBS poll, um, if you're just looking at voters writ large, he's in a be he's in better shape in terms of surviving the recall and that first question of just do you want Gavin Newsom recalled. But if you narrow that pool to likely voters, then it gets really, really tight and is right at the margin of error. Yeah. The other thing we should throw into this mix is the fact that in polls in other states across the country, there has been a massive Democratic lean, meaning that Republicans have consistently performed in state after state and national election after national election better than what the polls actually say. Is that the case here? We don't know. But that is another thing that you should factor in as you're looking at these numbers. In terms of the second question, who they would pick, let me tell you who they're not going to pick, which mm -hmm. is Caitlyn Jenner, who right. stands right oh, now yeah. at 
two percent. Is she of the still vote. in Australia? Where, where is she even in here in the well, country? And like, it's impressive to get two percent yeah. when you are that well known. Yeah, we're that I mean, famous. everyone knows. Yeah, everybody knows who she is. Who Caitlyn Jenner is? She's at two percent in this poll. The person who, right, actually, the leading candidate right now is don't know. Yeah. Um, so definitely still a jump ball here, but in terms of actual people, the leading candidate is a conservative talk radio host named Larry Elder. Um, don't know that much about him. Personally, Newsom's been painting him as he's to the right of Trump, mm -hmm. but we wanted to play you a little bit of one of his ads so you could get a taste of what he's all about. You know, another commercial, the candidate walks around while a voice tells you how great he or she is. Well, I can talk. The reason to recall Newsom is more than his gas tax hike. It's his incompetence, costing the state tens of billions, including fraud and corruption. His policies enable bad schools, high crime, more poverty. The poor get government aid, the rich don't need it. And the middle class is leaving. I'm Larry Elder. This is a fight for the soul of California. Recall Newsom, elect Elder. Um, the thing that I thought was really bad. interesting there is he said it, his tagline there was it's a fight for the mm -hmm. soul of California, which is a total ripoff of Biden, but in a state that is overwhelmingly Democratic. Overwhelmingly Biden. Not, and not he's a not stupid move. Didn't say the word Republican there either. No. Smart man. Now, we have a poll. Let's put that up there. Rob Pyers has this tweet. Let's put it on the screen. Take a look at that in terms of how well he's doing. 23% at the 25% saying, we have no idea. 23% Larry Elder, 20% nobody. Then Kevin <laughs> Paffrath. So, Inspiring choices there. Look. 25%, I don't know. 20%, no yeah. one. <laughs> I don't want to say that he's going to be the next governor of California. I frankly have no idea. But as you said, Trump actually did better in the state of California in 2020 than he did in 2016. Not only that, he won in areas like Orange County, in Asian areas, increased his Latino vote share in the state in counties like LA mm -hmm. and more. So that would tell you that there is some dissatisfaction with the you know liberal elite in California. Capitalize on that just enough and you could become the next governor with only 23% of the vote. And given it's the state of the system. country, given, well, the whole thing is messed up. Why are they a one party state? I think it's a total joke, but that's a whole other, you know, uh, that's a whole other conversation. Really, what I do think is important is that when we look at this, the odds are that Democrats are probably being oversampled in these polls. That's the one thing that we've learned over and over again yeah. since 2016. Now, maybe the polls revert back to the pre-Trump era. I have no idea. But given the state of the country, given especially the dissatisfaction over lockdowns, LA County, San Francisco is now bringing in vaccine passports and more, I would bet that the most motivated people in the country are those most dissatisfied with these types of policies right. and would come out and vote. And to that point, I would not want to be Gavin Newsom today. I think he is a true 50-50 chance right now. Well, the motivation is the key part. Yeah. Because, again, his approval rating is actually pretty decent. 57%. To 43%, not too bad. Mm -hmm. Better than Trump ever had right. during his entire presidency. Um, so he's abo solidly above water there. But the question, who's going to turn out to vote? And um, as you said, I, and I think this is not just a problem for Newsom. I also think it's a bit of a bellwether uh, nationwide. Republicans are pretty motivated. Yeah. Um, people who oppose the uh, COVID restrictions are much more, seem to be much more motivated than Democrats who, you know, by and large went back to brunch. And the fact that the media has not really, not really dug in on this, uh, I, I think is also a problem for him. That's because true. he's having an issue motivating people and convincing them that this is ultimately a real threat. So who knows what's going to happen here, but we wanted to put it on your radar, so to speak, um, as something that is definitely a possibility and is not getting a lot of attention from mainstream media. Yeah, that's right. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.